Federal regulators moving to crack down on AI-generated images and audio and political advertising. The Federal Elected uh, Commission, uh, Federal Election Commission, I should say, unanimously agreeing to seek public comment on whether existing rules aimed at preventing fraudulent campaign advertising apply to ads that use artificial intelligence. This comes amid a string of high-profile political ads that use deep fake images and audio. Joining us right now for more is uh, Henny uh, Farid, uh, is professor of digital forensics, misinformation, human perception. The University of California, Berkeley, also the author of a new op-ed in The Hill. Yes, we should regulate AI-generated political ads, but don't stop there. Let's, let's start there, Professor. When you say don't stop there, where do you want to start? Yeah, I mean, we should understand that we have been manipulating audio images and video for a long time, well before there was AI. And so this is not fundamentally an AI problem. This is a manipulation problem. AI is just the latest tool in that. So I think if we're going to focus on deception and political ads and deception in general, we should talk about deception and not the way you get to deception. So and the other point, too, is that, as you heard from the congressman, one concern is putting uh, voice into another person's uh, likeness. Absolutely. But the examples you showed earlier were not that. So we should also think about the different types of deception that go beyond impersonation. Okay, but let's just uh, so when you talk about deception, Ultimately, underneath the word deception is the word truth, I think, which is where you're going with this, which is you want yeah. at truth in advertising, right? And the question is, what is truth in advertising when it comes to politics in this day and age when people say things uh, that may not be true and people do things that may not be true and now people are making up images that may not be true? But what, what's the distinction in your mind? Good. I think you got to the nut of the question, didn't you, right? This is not really fundamentally an AI question. This is what standard do we want to hold our politicians to? And I think it's eminently reasonable to say that you should be truthful. You should be truthful when you speak. You should be truthful when you have advertisement. You should be truthful when you talk to your constituents There's and stand behind what you believe in. And, let and But who is the there. truth? We talk about the truth squad. Who is the truth police in this case? This is, how do you enforce uh, the truth? You know, how do the truth police enforce the truth, if you will. Well, how does this all work? First of all, I think that's a dangerous term, truth police. So let's, let's stay away from that, because I don't think this is about policing. This is about disclosing. And I think you're asking an enforcement question, and I'm asking a policy question. And I think it's perfectly fair to ask about enforcement. You can say, look, if you're going to create a policy, well, then what are the rules and, and regulations, and how do you enforce it? I'm starting with policy. Do we want to ask that our politicians be truthful? You can say no. You can absolutely say, look, it's not my problem. But once we decide that, then I think you have an enforcement question. I don't see, I actually think that's hard. I think when things are found to be objectively false and somebody has objectively lied and created a manipulative Im image, well, then there are the penalties that are associated with that. And that's how it goes. That's what the FEC is there for. We have, we have a regulatory body for this. We don't have to create a new body. And so, but, but again, I, I can see this in the AI context, something that's, that's completely false and sort of made up. But then you get into these issues where there are people who are spinning, let's say, or shading the truth sure. and how sure. that. And I know you say this isn't about enforcement, but it's very hard to say we want the truth, which, by the way, I think we all want the truth. I think, unfortunately, uh, we now live in this sort of uniquely weird age where people are finding their own truths. And that is, yeah. to me, the hardest part about this. Yeah, look, I, I think you're absolutely right that there are things that are true, there are things that are false, and there's all this stuff in the middle. And here's the thing. If you get caught up worrying about the stuff in the middle, is this really true, not true? Well, you're, you're never going to do anything. And so I think this is actually relatively easy. You have a standard for this is objectively false. It is provably false. It is not a spin. It is not a slight distortion. It is not an exaggeration. And you enforce those. And everything else is, well, that's the way it goes. And so I, I don't think we have to get caught up in the middle ground here. And this is also true with generated images. I mean, at the end of the day, I can whole cloth create a video of President Biden saying something he never said. That is clearly false. Or I can do something very subtle like distort an image ever so slightly to make him look less uh, commanding. Now, that's more of a spin that's, that's not maybe quite as explicit. There's always going to be gradations here. I say don't focus on the middle stuff. Focus on the easy stuff. Force the types of images that you're seeing on the screen right now to say we either won't allow it or we will force disclosure. I, did, I, I, I don't think it has anything to do with AI either. Uh, it, it just has to do because there are certain candidates or former politicians or present politicians where 
the AI stuff's not as crazy as the actual stuff. So it, you know, you better. It's an enabler. It's an enabler. <laughs> AI technology. couldn't say crazier stuff than what what what's being said. But what does bother me, Professor, is I've seen fact checkers, and, and I can see that they just reek of of uh, a POV of a point of view, and the facts that they're checking. The fact checkers need to be fact checked, and so I, then those fact checkers need to be fact checked. Yeah. I mean, this, it's a never-ending is... thing, and you never, so I don't know how you get. To, and then the other thing Andrew was talking about was the spin. I think about the ways you can talk about economic data, economic numbers, performance, jobs, you know, added jobs, the deficits, all the stuff that you can say might be true, on, but it's so factually incorrect or taken out of context that it's useless, or it's as bad as a yeah. lie. And we see yeah. that too. So who, which yeah. fact checkers are gonna I, look at those? I, I think you're absolutely right. And this is the irony of the information age is that getting reliable information somehow has gotten harder, not easier, despite the fact that we have an, access to an unprecedented amount of information. I think you're right. Here, by the way, is where I think the AI does make it a little bit easier. Because when you use AI to create an image or a video or an audio, it is whole cloth being generated and it is more likely than not to be untrue. Now, you still have to decide, is it harmful? If I create the types of images you saw at the top of this piece showing a hypothetical dystopian future of Biden as elected president, is that deceptive? Do people clearly know that that is meant? And, and you're always going to have these gradations. And what I say is don't get caught up in the middle. Don't get caught up in the gray area. Create rules that are unambiguous deal with those rules, and then we'll work our way through the nuances and the complexities later on. But I think there is clear-cut, bald-faced lies and conspiracies that we can actually deal with. I'm going to focus my energy there and then declare victory if we can solve that problem.